and the Arabic speaking Muslims if they're going to deal honestly with what the Arabic says. The Quran says that Allah prays. He prays for Muhammad and he prays for believers. Note what I did not say. I didn't say Allah prays to Muhammad. I didn't say he prays to Muhammad. I don't want someone calling saying, you said Allah prays to Muhammad, you're a liar. I'm not saying Allah prays to Muhammad. I say Allah prays for him and the believers. Where's the proof? Here. Surah Al-Baqarah, and there's an article where I document this, and I quote the Quran and the Hadith that say that Allah prays and He worships. According to one Hadith, Allah even recites the Quran, right? And did so before He created the heavens and the earth. But here, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 157. This is what it says. They are those on whom are the prayers, salawatun, salawat, the prayers from their Lord. These are the ones that have the prayers of their Lord upon them. Their Lord prays for them, salawat, and mercy, His mercy and prayers. It is they who are the guided ones. Surah 33, 43, chapter 33, verse 43. It says, He it is who prays, you salli, for you, you salli, Allah prays for you, and His angels. So Allah and His angels are praying for believers. That's 33, verse 43. And then, finally, Surah 33, verse 56. 33, verse 56. Verily, Allah and His angels pray. You saluna. In fact, it says, you saluna ala nabi. Allah and His angels are both, both these groups are praying upon for the Prophet. O you who believe, pray for him. Sallu. You also pray. If Allah and His angels pray for Muhammad, you pray too. Three verses in the Quran that says that Allah prays. I have the Muslim scholars admitting that the word salawat and salah means prayer and worship and that Allah actually prays. I know Muslims come up with objections saying, no, it doesn't mean that. Allah's salat means his barakah, his blessing. No, because even one Muslim scholar said that even Muhammad made a distinction between Allah's salah and his barakah, meaning he used two different words to denote that Allah prays and blesses. So you cannot say that prayer means blessing. And you cannot say that the Arabic words for prayer means that Allah is sending mercy because in Surah 2157 it says this. Let me repeat it again. They are those on whom are the prayers from the Lord and mercy. So both Allah's prayers and His mercy, right, are shown, are given to the believers. So here prayer is different from Rahmah. Two different words suggesting that not only does Allah send blessing and mercy, He also prays. So now we are going to ask the Muslims the following question. And I have plenty of more documentation. If you're saying that I'm wrong, I'm lying, I have the quotes from the Muslim scholars saying I'm right. So you can call and challenge me, quote them to, say, to show us where it says Allah prays. But here's my challenge to you. Since you don't believe in the Trinity, you don't believe Allah is three persons, you don't believe Allah is two persons, Allah is absolutely one, can you explain to us Christians, whom does Allah pray to when He prays for Muhammad and believers? When angels pray for Muhammad, they're praying to Allah. When you pray for Muhammad, you're praying to Allah. When Allah prays for Muhammad, who is he praying to? To himself? Could you please answer that objection? We invite you to call in. Now, my Muslim friends tell me that this concept of God is absurd, even though we got it from God through the missions of the Son and the Spirit. My Muslim friends tell me that I should reject this confusing concept of God and believe in something much simpler, the Islamic concept of God. But I've been going through your sources for a good little while now, and I see some serious problems with the doctrine of Tawheed. Let me give you a few examples. First, Allah prays. People ask, Jesus is God, why does he pray? I have to remind them that we're Trinitarians. Makes perfect sense for the Son to speak to the Father. Makes much less sense, given the Islamic concept of God, for Allah to pray. In Surah 33, verse 56 of the Quran, we read, Surely Allah and His angels pray for the Prophet. O you who believe, pray for him and salute him with a worthy salutation. Allah and His angels pray for the Prophet. Translators try to hide this by translating it as Allah and his angels send blessings or show mercy or they praise him. The problem here is that what it says Allah does is Salah. 
And you know what that means. You know there are perfectly good Arabic ways of saying all of those other things. Every Arab speaker in the world knows that Salah means prayer. And it says that Allah does Salah. So, who is Allah praying to? He says, Allah says, uh, that Allah yusalli ala nabi And he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. There's a difference between yusalli lahu and yusalli ala in the Arabic language. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I knew I was going to have to give you a free Arabic lesson here today. I knew it. And that's why the translators put four, not to the Prophet. You don't know what the, the words in Arabic mean. Don't hear speak salah. Come on, please, don't embarrass yourself. In Surah 33, verse 56 of the Quran, we read, Surely Allah and his angels pray for the Prophet. And he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. Surely Allah and his angels pray for the Prophet. And he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. Pray for the Prophet. And he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. For the Prophet. And that's why the translators put for, not to the Prophet. You know what I did not say. I didn't say Allah prays to Muhammad. I didn't say praise to Muhammad. I don't want someone calling saying, you said Allah prays to Muhammad, you're a liar. I'm not saying Allah prays to Muhammad. I say Allah prays for him and the believers. For the Prophet. Chapter 33 of the Quran, you always bring up about uh, God um, praying to Muhammad. Yeah, because uh, it, it actually, is a problem, isn't it, Manu? No, no it's he, not. He's going to say, um, because he's going to tell you chapter, it doesn't mean that. The same chapter, verse 43, it says that God is the one that places his prayers upon you and his angels also to bring you out okay, of Okay, so, so, so who is Let God praying yeah, to? Uh, Judith, so I'm glad, oh, Manu. On. Okay, Manu. Thank you for admitting it means prayer. Yes, You've thank you. You've only created a greater problem for yourself. You're saying Hang he doesn't on. just pray for Muhammad. He also prays for believers. Yeah. You're still left with the problem, who does your God pray to when he prays for believers and Muhammad? Answer your, that, please. Your, your problem is the fact that you're translating that as praying to. It's not praying to. It's placing. Manu, you're attacking straw man. Manu. No, hang on. Oh, hold on. oh, no, 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 you hang on. Manu, you did it again. I'm not going to let you get away with it. And I'm actually very disappointed in you at perverting people's words. I didn't translate the word as praying to, so you're lying. I said that it means that Allah prays for or upon. Upon, yeah. My question is, when Allah prays for someone, he has to pray to someone. For example, to make it easy for you to understand, if I said, I prayed for Pastor Joseph, that statement implies that I'm praying to someone when I pray for Pastor Joseph. So when your God and angels pray for Muhammad, who do they pray to? Don't dare twist our words. Answer the question. The, the way to translate that is, and if you give me 10 seconds, I can say Please it. Please not answer God, it. God places his prayers upon, meaning he knows fully what condition he has placed his prophet or people. Okay, in. okay, Manu, that, that's that? fine. You yeah. know, your translation. You but but who, who, who are his well, prayers Manu, addressed to? Manu, this is your final chance. Let me now refute your distortion. Did you pay careful attention to what CP and I said? In 3356, it says Allah and the angels together perform this act. That means according to your perverted reading of the Arabic Quran, you're saying that Allah and the angels place their prayers upon Muhammad. That is, that so, is that's so nonsensical that you yourself won't buy it. How do no, no, angels pray? True. You're cutting me off, Manu. We're going to end the conversation if you do. How do angels pray, pray, uh, place their prayers on anyone? Answer that. Don't avoid the answer. Answer the question, how do angels place their prayers on anyone? Please answer that. Okay. The angels pray to God. Did you catch it? God, yes. Angels pray to God, and God prays to himself, puts his prayers <laughs> okay, on Okay, thank you. <laughs> Let me repeat the answer of Manu for the audience. Yeah. Folks, you just heard a Muslim say... Allah prays to himself. And Angels something? pray to God. That's exactly what we wanted you to admit. So thank yeah. you for helping our case. 
Because now the argument that Muslims use against Jesus will now be turned against you. Muslims say, how can Jesus be God if he prays? Who is he praying to? To himself? Mm -hmm. You just heard, I want the audience to hear, a Quran-only Muslim admit his God prays to himself. In other words, basically, since prayer is worship, Allah worships himself. That's a schizophrenic deity. I think so. Unless, of course, you had Thank a you doctrine of the Trinity, and then that would explain exactly. things. Exactly. Jesus yeah. is not the Father. So you yeah. can pray to the Father. Without this meaning, it's a schizophrenic deity. But thank you, Manu, for bringing it up. We really appreciate you confirming our point. Glory to Jesus Another, Christ. One more point, yes. quick go, one go ahead, I can quickly. make. Qu quickly. The chapter 46 that you brought up about yes. Muhammad, uh, Prophet Muhammad not knowing what's going to be happening to him. Yeah. Another part of the Quran, God promises him that the, the al akhirat, the, uh, the uh, hereafter, is going to be better for him than this world. All right, so, so which one is it? Which one is it, man? So which is so, it? Yeah. So what that meant is that Prophet Muhammad was saying he doesn't know how he's going to be end up in this life. Meaning, in this life, he's not going to know what kind of ordeals or what kind of fate he's going to have. That it's not an open ended till eternity. God tells him that the, uh, the next world is going to be better for him than this world. So okay, that's in the uh, Manu, context. You, you have a problem. You just ended up proving that there are contradictions in the Quran. If Allah promised Muhammad that his situation will be better in the next world, why in the world are you praying for his peace? You just ended up proving your Quran is full of irreconcilable contradictions. Now explain to me, Manu, if that passage is true, that his condition will be better in the Akhirah, then that means he's already in a state of peace, which goes back to my point. If he's in a state of peace, why in the world are you praying for him? We pray for him because of the mission that God entrusted him in. And that mission is over. It's over. Why are you we're praying for him? For, for, we're thankful for, his, for, the, for the acts that he committed and sacrifices that he made. Show me That's that in 3356. Show me that in 3356. Your prayers is simply thanking God for Muhammad. So what you're basically saying, notice the problem you just created for yourself. I want the audience to hear this. 3356 says, Allah and his angels pray upon Muhammad. You who believe also pray for him. Notice how I interpret it. I want everyone to hear it. That means we are thankful to God for his mission. You know what that means? Consistency demands that if that's what it means for, for Muslims to pray, that means Allah is thanking himself for the mission of Muhammad. So when Allah prays, he goes, Oh, thank you, Allah, for the mission of Muhammad, because that's what prayers mean in 3356. Manu, do yourself a favor, man. Give it up. Turn to Jesus, your only hope of salvation, because you're fighting a losing battle. Jesus Christ is Lord, and may he deliver you from these lies and deceptions and grant you the grace leading unto life.